you guys didn't hear. Um, just letting you guys know before this video gets started, the 15 R6 simple siege tips, very easy tips, very easy to learn, catch on. I will explain all 15 as well as I can in a short period of time, but quick. Um, Discord link in the bio, go join. Um, there's a good amount of people there already. If you have not already joined, make sure you hop in there. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I post daily YouTube videos every single day. Enjoy the video. Now for siege tip number one. This is going to be quick leaning. It's one of it's one of the most important situations that you're going to put yourself into a gunfight wise. This is number one. These are simple tips, so I'm not gonna go super into depth into quick leaning. But what I mean by quick leaning is simply when you're leaning straight on, and you quick lean. You're getting it. Pretty much all quick leaning is is for information. Like quick, let's say there's a guy in this window. I'm gonna shoot it open just a tad bit. Let's say he spawned in there. If I quick lean, I see the window open. He's probably not gonna kill me. So when you do quick lean back, quick tip, instead of just head level quick leaning, because that's what he thinks you are, crouch and reposition your crosshair to where they are and get the one tap. No, that's a glitch. Anyways, controller glitch. But if you ever play PC on controller, the gun just starts shooting randomly. It's terrible, but besides the point, that's what I mean by quick leaning. It's for information for the most part, and then the second quick lean is usually for the kill. So always, when you quick lean, head level, crouch, and then it Harris outside. Anyways, quick lean. So let's say I'm crouched quick leaning. Then I stand, reposition my crosshair, and then go for the one tap. That's number one. Number two is positioning. Genuinely, when you are taking gunfights, you never want to put yourself in a position to be shot from more than two different angles. The reason is, as any real human being, you're not going to be able to flick to four people in the span of time to kill you. So, what I mean by that, in a scenario like this, when I'm approaching garage doorway, you want to drone. That's number three and two, they're put together. Drone everything, find, ch when you're droning, lower rank players, they don't check corners, rat corners. I play against champions, PC champ, even some pros I play against to do this. They will rat this corner in garage, people do it all the time, or they will rat in a kennel. Under kennel, right here, Harry Potter, kennel, whatever, under stairways, is Harry Potter on every map. Alright, that's a quick little tip. If there's a stairwell, and there's something under it, and there's space, it's called Harry Potter. This is called kennel, because there's a kennel here. Anyways, point is, when you are droning, you're supposed to check every singular corner, so you don't miss drone. Most people, when they drone, they want to just get as much information quick like this, and just check up the stairs. Check the corners. Check every corner, figure out where they're at. If the garage is clear, have a teammate hop on a drone. Number four is communication. You always want to communicate. Now, if you're not communicating with your team, you're not going to know things. Your teammate's not going to know where people are. You're not going to know where people are. So always keep your ears and your eyes open and give the comms as much as you can. Comms or communication, whatever. For call outs, let's say, all right, there's a guy, whatever. How I call this out, there's a guy going into lounge right now, bottom red, right? bottom red right now standing. That's number five. When you're giving callouts, please tell what your teammates, if they're crouching or standing, because that will be so much easier to know. Let's say I get a call, he's crouched. I go crouch level, and I swing where he would be crouched. Now, he may not be crouching, which is fine. That's completely fine. But if he doesn't change position, let's just say, you know, he was here, whatever. I don't know where he went. But. I would know, so that's number five. Now number six is going to be utility usage. Operators, like every operator in the game has some sort of utility except like, um, really there's, I can't name one honestly, attacking. Um, that's actually number seven. Uh, number seven is understanding that attacking is attacking and defending is defending. So when you are defending, play a little bit more passive. When you are attacking, you're going to have to play a little bit more aggressive off information. Defending, if you get a call out, you don't have to act off of it. Attacking, most of the time in high elo, pros, any any real comp, they instantly off information, they react off of it, and they play off of information attacking. Now defending, you may get a call out, there's a guy garage, and you're in, let's say you're in dirt, right? You don't have to react off of it. But if you're attacking, reacting off all of, inf all of the information is amazing, because at the end of the round, if there is no one, the plant is not down, and the timer exceeds zero seconds, it's over. You lose the round as an attacker. If you're defending, we all know this, you win the round. If they don't get the plant down, or if you defuse, or if the time runs out, as a defender, you're winning. So that whole purpose right there is simply for you to understand 
that as a defender, you need to defend. That's number seven. As a defender, you need to defend. As an attacker, you need to attack with your team. Coordination is key. Also, understanding operator rules. This is number eight. Attacking, there are three major operator rules. Fragging, or entry. Flex, slash droner, slash flank watch, which technically is like five, but I say there's three. Flex, slash flank watch. Entry fragger, slash, you know, second entry, which... Those are the two entries, usually Ash, Ayana, Twitch, um, operators like that. Flex would be Nomad, Thatcher, Capitao, stuff like that. IQ maybe. Now, number three is the, name, the major role for attacking is support. It's the most important stepping stone as an attacker. Most people say, oh, this guy's not getting any kills. But what if he's droning in, getting his teammate kills? That's the most important aspect of Siege. Now, you may not know, but I... As a controller on BC, I play fragging operators. I know that sounds stupid, but I do. And the reason why I do is because I've always done it for seven years of playing Siege. You need to do what you're comfortable with. That's number fucking nine. Nine or eight. I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. This is all going in one take. Who cares? Number eight or nine. I think nine. Is you have to be understanding that you as a player, right? You as a player, have to be comfortable with something already. If you have not played Siege at all, you need to understand that there are roles, like I just said. Learn what operators those roles are. Play the game enough to a point where you understand the maps. That's number 10. Know the damn maps. If you don't know the maps, Terrace Hunt, right? When you're warming up, a lot of people play T-Hunt. Choose ranked maps that you do not know very well. Run around, learn the map. The bottom of your screen, as you see, is the utility room. Now this, unfortunately, is not called utility for most people. They call it blue. So some maps have different callouts actually for what they say in the bottom, but for the most part, these callouts, oil pit. This is oil pit. Everyone calls it oil pit. This is oil pit hallway slash blue hallway. Understanding maps is one of the most important things in Siege and callouts because you have to give communications to your teammates for them to understand where people are. So number 10, run around in a hunt. Find where you don't, like maps you don't know what callouts are. And give them callouts. Now, obviously, there are small specifications of callouts per room, per map. That's more in-depth stuff. As long as they understand that for a specific area and you're not saying Narnia and the sky's actually in blue, you'll be fine. Going on to number 11, the most important thing in Siege, in my opinion, for attacking is understanding that grenades are the most important. Utility-wise, they're the most important utility in Siege because... They can go boom, and you can get a kill, right? I mean, that's pretty simple. You get two of them, Glass, Nook, Ayana, um, Sledge. Those are the four operators that end. I don't know the fifth one. I don't even know if there is. I think there's only four operators right now in Siege. Those four. Sledge, Nook, Ayana, and uh, Glass. Those are the four operators that I know that have nades right now. Siege somehow doesn't have many nades operators right now. There used to be like seven or eight people with nades. There's only four right now. That's fine. Um, Ayana's the best operator in the game for nade operators. Sledge number two. You can go Nook if you'd like, but let's just be honest. Ayana is the most played grenade operator. So, when you're throwing grenades, one tick, two tick, three tick, four tick, five tick. As nades go, that was unintentional. As nades go, the ticks go quicker. Now, when you want to nade somebody from below, let's just say, let me get out of here. Let's say there's a, there, you're attacking Cash CCTV, okay? You're attacking Cash CCTV. Um, one of the most played positions in cash CCTV is actually green box now the default nade is behind green box is right here now i'll show you what i'm talking about right now it depends also if your teammates are in construction you should probably not go need a spot that your teammates can already see so leave me alone this yellow thing that i yellowed the last time is right here this is right behind green box this is a good grenade if your teammates are pushing main breach or garage because people aren't going to be playing in a vicinity or area that they can die from now obviously if your teammates in construction do not need that yellow thing that i showed you three seconds ago you're going to want to need i'll be right back when i come back to a new key hunt and be in the same position give me a second this is number 15 now obviously don't think i skipped um this is i'm just talking while this tea hunt loads me back into the area for that nade on number 11 with tip number 11 with grenading people from below and understanding grenades number 15 eliminate the terror i preach this the most when i play with people that have hot heads in god complexes if you know what a god complex is it means they think they're better than everybody it's a damn video game all right 
people need to grow up, mature a little bit, understand, all right, you're not God, you know what I mean? You're not the best of all time. Nobody in Siege is the best of all time, in my opinion, because when you measure greatness in this game, you can't measure it in skill with just gun skill. This game is so much more than that. It's just like comparing basketball players and eras. You can't, because there is no legitimate statistic that can measure greatness at all in basketball. Now, same with Siege. Now, Siege is not anywhere close to basketball, but it's an analogy. Understand that you are not the best player of all time. Nobody is, in my opinion. Now, you have your opinion, but this number 15 is the most important thing. It's your mental. Staying like positive at all times is one of the most important things. I've done it for the last about four or five months, and it's been a game changer for me. I've played so much better. I've enjoyed Siege more. I, I don't mauled as much. And I feel like when you do try your best to stay positive, understand that your teammates need you also. If you die and you just start bitching and just like, fuck, fuck, he's such a bitch. He's, why is he playing like that? What that does for you and your teammates is just negative. It makes you feel like shit. It makes you just complain. And it makes you not want to play Siege. It also makes your teammates not be able to fucking understand where the teammate, well, I mean, where the other guy just killed you from, right? You have to give better commas, comms, not commas, what am I saying? Give better callouts after you die. The time to kill in this game in Siege is very, very small, right? Headshot, one shot, boom, dead. The span of time you could have given a call out, your teammate could die. It happened countless and countless and countless of times in rank. To me, to my teammates, because I'm bitching about my death instead of giving call outs, remember that fifth, this is the most important one. Give call outs the second you die. Be positive, give good call outs. Just vibe, all right? Just vibe. Sit on cameras for your teammates, be a good teammate. That's the best thing I could give out to newer players because you don't have to kill people with your gun. You can give callouts and your teammates get kills, right? You don't have to be the best player in your stack. Anyways, let's get back to the grenade spot that I was talking about earlier. All right, just got had to clear stock. Anyways, what I was saying is your teammate is in con, right? Construction, attacking CCTV cash, all right? This nade spot isn't going to work because there won't be anyone there. Your teammate would have killed him if there was. So the best nade spot would be right here. Right here is right behind this box area. Everyone plays right here. It's one of the most popular positions or right here. So what I usually nade is about right here in between. Usually a free nade kill if you nade it correctly. If you copy my exact grenade, you will get kills. People are like, what time, what tick do I throw it? It really doesn't matter. It's more of timing. Now, you could time it if you want. Um, usually it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ticks. I misclicked it a little bit because it was a bit further distance, but also, like I just said, the further the distance is, the shorter amount of time you want to hold it. So always, I try always five, five meters and about seven to the eighth click, you want to throw it. Pretty sure it's six, seven, eighth clicks, one of those two. Anyways, just time it up with my nade. If you, you can go back in the video and rewatch that little spot right there, figure out to time up with your nades, and then come back to number 12. Going into number 12, this is also one of the most important things in Siege. It's called using your utility. Now, I already said flashbangs, stuff like that, but what I mean by operator utility, everyone has individual gadgets, like Ayana has an Ayana clone. Number 12, how to Ayana clone, how to use your utility. This is mostly Ayana, a little Ayana tip for number 12. Every operator has their own unique ability. Always use your ability to the max that you can because it can help you win rounds. Now, when Ayana cloning, you can full Ayana clone and use information. This operator is one of the strongest for information. Not many people use the clone, but I cleared what? Bars clear. Bar table's clear, main stairs clear, bathroom clear. Boom. I cleared a good portion of the map in a span of a short period of time with a clone. Same thing you could do with the drone. But Ionic clones regenerate very quickly, actually. So always remember, Ionic cloning is very smart. Also, a huge tip with Ayana is you could Ayana bait. You could do this. Boom. And they think you're a clone and just gun people down. That's a huge tip with Ayana. The sound is so loud with the... Super, super, super loud. Anyways, going into number 13. For number 13, we're going to go hop into the operator menu and show you what you need to be running on every gun, if possible. 
All right, so the best attachment in Siege, fucking recoil control and damage, it's literally extended barrel, considering the new update just released. Extended barrel is disgusting. Now, obviously, I don't even have it on Sledge, because Sledge doesn't have one. My bad. Anyways, operator, the best operator right now in the game with a um, extended barrel is the Para 308. 54 damage is insane. Run the extended barrel, bro. Just do it, all right? It's really, really good, in my opinion. The recoil is pretty similar to every other one. And if you can't run an extended barrel on every gun, run a suppressor. Um, the reason I like to run suppressors, actually, because the recoil on a suppressor is nearly the same as every other one. So, considering that, the suppressor is huge. Um, before the extended barrel, it was the number one sight, um, the number one barrel, in my opinion. So, suppressor or extended barrel, or you're throwing. If you're not using one of those two, you are throwing. Um, it's pretty crazy how insane suppressors are, considering you can't hear anything. And like I said earlier, just kidding, I'm saying it right now. I forgot number 14, bro. Number 14, the final tip technically, because I already gave you guys 15, is sound. Sound is the most important thing in Siege other than, you know, understanding the game, the maps, stuff like that. It's one of the most important things. It's not the most important you don't need sound to play Siege, but you really, really should. It's very recommended to have a good headset. If you don't have a good headset right now, there are multiple headsets in the market that you can get. HyperX's are good. I have a loot pair of Lucid Sounds. They're pretty unknown, but I like them. Um, also, Arctis 9X. Um, what I don't remember, but Arctis 9X's are really good as well. I had those for about two years until they just took a shit. They're, they're gone. But those are good headsets. If you don't have any good pair if you have like a default xbox pair definitely try to invest or ask your parents if you don't have, have like money or a job ask your parents for one there's cheap headsets on the market you can get but siege you need good headset or you will not play well that's simple as that anyways without further ado the video is completed all 15 tips have been speed out i hope hopefully i didn't miss any if i did here's a bonus tip play siege Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new to stay up to date. I post videos every single day. So, peace.